Hello, we're the Nettles family. We're missionaries in St. Mark, Haiti with Youth with a Mission. I'm Freeman. This is my wife, Shelly, my youngest daughter, April, my oldest daughter, Rebecca, and my son, Caleb. We've been here five and a half years on the mission field now. We uh, serve in various areas. Uh, some of the major ones are uh, discipleship training school for young men and young women, uh, pastoral care of all our existing staff, do uh, kids' church, uh, homes of hope in the fifth section, and just other things that we are uh, as, as they come up. Well, as most of you know, or all of you know, actually, um, last year we experienced a very devastating earthquake here in Haiti. It was amazing to us that we should be here at a time um, where such a big horrific thing had happened. But we were glad to be here. We were glad that God had placed us here. Um, but we really didn't know when the dust settled where we were going to end up. I remember just the week before the earthquake happened, here on the base we were talking about hosting a team of 50 and considered that a huge team and didn't know how we were going to do it. And then the earthquake happened and we had anywhere from 100 to 200 volunteers here um, for the next six months. And it was an amazing time of God stretching us and um, just showing himself faithful. It was amazing to see how the body of Christ just came together at that time and they were here. They were here quickly. They were on the ground quickly. They were at our base quickly. And there's no way we could have done what we did that year without all the volunteers that came. It was also a little bit of a curse in that um, all that many people, it felt like that we had just sometimes been crushed under the weight of everything that was going on. And so we, we truly just didn't know. We didn't know at the end of all of this where we were going to be and how things were going to be. Um, but this year has been amazing. God has been faithful. Our Homes of Hope project that began before the earthquake for flood victims, uh, we continued on after the earthquake. Um, we had three different tent cities that had been set up um, that Youth with the Mission was working with. And we were able at the end of July to see all of those tent cities emptied and um, all the people are in homes in Team on that, um, which is a new community that's been raised up with the Homes of Hope project. Um, so we have seen God do some wonderful things. Last year during the earthquake, we went ahead and we, we ran our discipleship training program uh, right alongside all of our relief work. And out of that year, we wound up with uh, six new staff members here in St. Mark, and then they had Two of those young men helped staff this year's pre-DTS. We were challenged in that uh, I kept thinking we needed to go smaller and the Lord kept saying go bigger. So this year uh, we wound up with 17 <laughs> students and I'm used to dealing with 8 to 12 being a comfortable number but we were able to do 17 students and uh, starting out we only had uh, scholarships for nine students and so with the Homes of Hope project going on they were uh, buy and block and then I asked Terry if we could, uh, as a DTS student, if we could make concrete blocks and sell them to the Homes of Hope and then use that to raise scholarships. So the whole first six months that we were we were working with the discipleship, we would uh, have our class in the morning, then we would go and make concrete blocks and we were able to raise scholarship for, for the eight additional students. So it was in, in six months time we were able to, to find the scholarship money for those students. Wow. <laughs> For me, I'm proud and happy that I'm playing a part as a student of Youth of the Mission. Even though the men's work is hard, I can do it. I'm really happy, and I'm proud of our leaders who've shown us how to do this work. We are not just evangelizing, we are doing it through action, and I'm learning how to make bricks, and I think the girls are having fun as I get better at it. Our director for pre-DTS was Freeman, who was a great director. He taught us how to live together and to live in relationship in a place where we live together. And there were some serious discussions because in the beginning of every family there is that. But we learned what it means, relationship. In this year's pre-DTS we were able to see uh, young men and young women right off of the street in front of our mission who came in. Uh, just being plain honest, they were not saved, had never been to a church, and they were, by their own confession, heathen. And they had uh, no experience with the Lord, but they asked for an opportunity. So 
we brought in uh, just right off the street in front of the mission six students and then uh, another three out of St. Mark's, so nine out of our 17 students come directly from our neighborhood that the mission is, is sitting in and all of those have proceeded well in the in the discipleship program. We we're able to see them uh, come to salvation, we we're able to see them uh, commit themselves to baptism and then to see them uh, walk it out and and become integral parts of the of the of the training program and in the, the functioning of the mission here so it's been a probably one of our most powerful years in the discipleship training and seeing the number of people that we're able to affect and then see a positive change in their lives and then to see them even move towards uh, challenging each other and at this point it's not just the instructors having to push them to do it they're pushing each other so it's been a been a very good year so right now uh, as we speak today, they're in the second phase of the training program and in, a, in another four weeks they'll be going on outreach uh, to Panama and then to some regions here in Haiti also. BDTS was really good and it's like a foundation so you can build so that you can have humility for your brothers and sisters. They share with you lots of stories and they show you how to communicate with your friends, brothers and sisters. They give a lot of good information. Because of the way PDTS was, I think we've all been able to dig into God more strongly with a deep intimacy that is truly wonderful. And I think we are entering into a relationship with the Lord in a new way. After last year and all the chaos of last year, I felt like that the Lord was saying it's time for you to go home. and it's time for you to stop and that was a little hard after a whole year of having to be involved in different things. I was never really off the base. I was always here but I was really unavailable. One day I was at our dining hall area and just doing the things that I had to do and, and here came April and she didn't say anything to me. She just walked up, she took my hand, she was leading me back to our house. And I said, well, is there a problem? Do you, do you need something? And she said, very quietly, she said, nope, it's just time for you to come home. And I just felt like the Lord was speaking that to me. Um, so this year, I felt like I needed to be home for my family, to be a stability for them, um, and, and just to be available to them. And also, not even just uh, with family, but also with the pastoral care. Freeman and I are part of the missions development. Um, group. So this year I've spent a lot of time in one -on what we call one-on-ones with women, um, just counseling them and helping them to uh, just work through their year here and their time here. Um, also with the kids' church, we continue on with that and God continues to give me a passion and a new vision for the kids. I felt like it was important to also to be stable for them as well. They need to know, they needed to know that kids' church after last year, the church is still here. They can still come. Um, every week it's something that they can come to and know that they're going to be loved. And for a lot of these kids, unlike kids' church sometimes in the States where we drop our kids off and then we say, you know, now we'll go have real church. Um, here, this is the only church that these kids have um, for most of them. And it's the only time in the week that they hear anything positive. And it's the only time that some of them hear anything good about God or hear anything good about themselves and it's often the only time that week that they're going to get a hug or hear someone say that they love them. I like to come to Kids Church because they teach me. They teach me how to pray. And they teach me God's word and I love it. And I will always come. They teach me how to behave myself at my house. How to talk to my parents. And I will always come to Kids Church. I really like how Shelly tells the stories and how she plays with us. At home I don't really have anyone to play with, but here I do. So 
I really think it's important to continue and the Kids Church has grown. We average anywhere from 100 to 200 kids on any given day, but we're, we're there. And that's, that's, I guess, the theme of what I feel this year is that we just need to be there. Our family, for the mission, and for the kids out on the street. I was really amazed at the earthquake time how much the kids grew with their walk with the Lord. They were out there, they were part of everything that was being done. They found their place in ministry. They um, they just went a lot deeper with the Lord. And I don't know if one of them has something that they want to share. My name is Rebecca, I'm 15 years old. And um, one thing that the Lord has showed us this year is in January, all the kids here on the mission field along with several adults to help us. We went out to Balagay and after we did these uh, two programs in these two villages, we went to this girl whose name is Woodland, who is 11 years old, but she's the size of a six-year-old. She doesn't speak. She shows no emotion, she, and she's been born this way. And we all gathered around and prayed um, against the spirits that were binding her, and nothing happened. But what the Lord sort of showed us with this is that we weren't failures. We did what the Lord told us to do, and now wasn't the time that she's meant to be healed. So one thing that happened while we were praying um, for Balagay and Woodland was that me and my sister April received gold dust. Um, like I got it on my hand and April got it on her face and I also received the gift of tongues so that was a huge thing for us because we've never experienced anything like that here and we've been just praying and worshiping a lot in different meetings and whatnot and God's just really been working in our lives and lots of people have been noticing noticing it too and encouraging us to keep on going in this and so yeah God's really strengthened us throughout this past time. As you can see, it's been a big year for the Nettles family. All of us have been in the ministry. It's not just mom and dad that are our missionaries. And we've been able to see the Lord uh, do great things out in Lubin's Four with Pastor Bossier and evangelism just uh, hitting new highs out there and growth. We've been able to see the continued uh, construction at clinic in Balagay, the moving from tent cities to an actual village in Timonet then seeing our own discipleship program here on the campus grow, the mentoring of our of our current staff and their further development, and then them learning to minister to the students. So it's been a, a very good year, and we're looking forward to the year that's coming. And uh, we want to say thank you to all of y'all for partnering with us. We wouldn't be able to do it, uh, what we do here in Haiti, without the churches and the individuals and the friends and the families that are so willing to invest in what God's doing in Haiti and invest in our family. And we just want to thank you for partnering with us in all that God's doing in St. Mark, Haiti. And in closing, one final note. After many long years of being in Haiti this year in DTS, we have the final distinction of having two sons of Okeechobee in this class, in this student body. Hello everybody. Love you, Mom. Hey everyone. Just uh, Christian from Haiti. Okeechobee, I love you! <laughs> <laughs>